Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Step of the Flatbush Down TV, where we don't glorify violence, we learn from it. Now this is a new episode called The Ten Bricks Jokes. If you have not subscribed, subscribe now. Click the notification bell to get notified whenever new video is posted. Like, share, subscribe. Build up the channel. If you like the content, play your part. Build up the channel. The year was 1988, summertime. I had recently been released from Queensboro, a work release facility in Long Island City on 7 and 0, meaning I had to bring in my check stubs for the week, take a urine test, then I was free to go about my business. I was working at a family establishment on Clarkson Avenue between 95th and 96th Street in the 90th section of Brooklyn, right at the tip of Brownsville. For the sake of saying, I worked a nine to five. To be in the game, you have to know how to work the system. Bully Dread, Bala, Yapa, Tenge, Ratti, and even Patsy Ironback were personalities who frequented the corner. No doubt there was a money-making strip Everybody was out there trying to eat, and eat they did. On the weekend, I usually meet up with my brethren, and we would go to love people on the ground or village hut. But this particular night, I was moving solo. I ran into a bad, bad, bad girl named Jackie a 5'7 browning, thick in the waist and cute in the face, with crazy shines on. We danced and talked for most of the night as we sipped on our favorite drinks, which she bought. She suggested we leave turntable lounge, so we jumped in my rental, bought some food and some drinks, and ended up at the JD's hotel. This was the third time me and Jackie got together, only different hotels. I still didn't trust her, even though she paid for everything. Jackie knew a lot of people, and I was suspicious of that. Maybe she knew my enemies, maybe she didn't, but that was a chance I didn't really want to take. She was a real go-getter. She kept a few stacks in a bag, designed a bag at all times, wasn't stingy with her money. Well, at least not with me. I had met her on a visit upstate through a hookup. When my brethren's lady drove up to visit him, Jackie would come visit me. Now that's a true brethren. Two weeks later, from the night at JD's, she beat me. I picked her up and we headed out to Sheep's Head Bay for some seafood and privacy. She was excited. I was curious. She asked me if I wanted to make, a, make some money. I moved in closer and listened intently, not wanting to miss a detail. I was, at the time, I was making 150 a week at my family job. Plus, small moves I was making just to survive. This move sounded like music to my ears, but I downplayed my emotions. Jackie tried to read me, but she just looked into blank eyes, void of all emotions. 
all expressions. The window of opportunity was small. I had a day or two max to formulate a plan. This was a life and death situation. Whenever you plan to take something valuable from dangerous people, one mistake could be your last. Me and my brethren, partner in crime, waited outside in a tinted Honda Accord, waiting patiently within striking distance of the big BMW that was in eye view. It seemed like we had been there for hours, and we had. But I was sure that the wait would be well worth it. The call came on the AudioVox phone, breaking the silence inside the vehicle. All Jackie said was, they're coming down now. I took position close to the BMW out of sight as two men walked up to the BMW holding duffel bags in both hands. One stood by the driver's door ready to open it. Just as my partner sped up abruptly with a Mac 10 and told the driver, Damn old pussy! I jammed the, man, the other man in the back with the duffel bags and told him to drop it, taking a nine millimeter out of his waistband, jewelry, cash, before throwing them in the trunk and speeding off. It was a clean, clean works. It was a three-way split. Jackie got three bricks. My partner got three, and I got four, which was the cherry on top for putting it all together.